Morning. I hope everybody has a blessed Sunday this Sunday. Um, before we get started, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of steal Miss Nicey's thunder just a little bit, and I'm going to give a little praise report. I told Miss Sheena on the way up here, today is our one-year anniversary. I told her, I said, I remember walking in, that built, in the doors, and everybody just bombarded us. I said, I have never been so bombarded in my life by people so excited to see us, and we wanted to thank you guys for being a great church family to us, and we continue to look forward to the years to come, and we just wanted to bring that up this morning. It's been a, a blessing to be here, and I just thank you guys for opening up your hearts and your home to us. Some opportunities for this week. Um, today, we got the, you know, the well, Sunday school at 10, traditional worship service in the sanctuary at 11. Second time around, 9 to 12, intercessors at 11.30. There will be no Wednesday night service this Wednesday. Please make notice of that. And then Thursday, again, we have second time around and celebrate recovery at 6. Some, uh, some announcements this week. The food, the food drive is in need. Please make sure that you guys bring some non-perishable items such as green beans, corn, peanut butter, fruit, soups, etc. Um, and uh, any donations may be left in the hall near the church office, and we greatly appreciate that. Thursday, July 18th at 6 p.m., there will be a trustees meeting. That's um, actually a where, Tuesday. That night. is actually yeah. on Tuesday. Tuesday. July. Sorry, I was wondering when I read that date. Where yeah. will that meet, be, meeting be at? That will be here in the, uh, one of the classrooms. All right, here in one of the classrooms on Tuesday, July 18th. Okay. Um, and then the blessings of the backpacks. Please don't forget about that. That will be July 26, 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And we invite everybody to come out and, and be a part of that great cause. And then we also have an impromptu work day at the Napa building slash lot here Saturday, August the 5th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. I hear there will be biscuits on, at 9 a.m. We need help such as brush clearing, mulch placement, landscaping, etc. So if you guys can bring tools, gloves, sunscreens, all are welcome to attend and help this great cause. And I hope you guys will be a part of that. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Ashley as she has an announcement for us this morning. Good morning. Um, I was just asked by my dad to um, advertise the fact that we are going to have a speaker in Arlington who is my cousin, Joy Griffin. She and her husband both graduated from Asbury. And dad is trying to light a um, revival fire uh, among their church. And he has invited his second church, anybody who would like to come and listen uh, to Joy. But she has a testimony of healing from the her early, uh, as a youth, she was healed. Um, a continual ministry that they have had abroad. They lead leaders or teach leaders um, throughout the well, throughout the world. They uh, actually live for a while in in um, trying to somewhere like Ecuador or somewhere like that with their children. But they have a ministry and they have been all over the world teaching and preaching. And so they, uh, her heart is is for. The Holy Spirit to move and to to grow in the churches across the world and so they are trying to light that fire in Arlington and he just wanted me to invite this church family any who want to go that is Saturday the 29th some of our ladies have been reading Joy's book um, in Nicey's class and so though some of them have asked me if we might take the bus and so we are considering doing that if we have enough people to ride in the bus so um, anybody that might be interested in going for a morning service over in Arlington on Saturday the 29th let me know and we will take the van down and uh, be there for that so uh, just invite y'all to participate in just a time of learning what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives impart us to be the church that God's called us to be thank you awesome. any other announcements uh, the one thing that I will mention is if you've had a chance to ride by the Napa lot in the back back there um, there's a lot of work that has been done there, um, kind of under the scenes. I know that the, there was some side laid. There's been volleyball nets put up. There's been clearing done. There's been rocks put out. There's been all of this work that has gone on. And if you weren't able to come to vacation Bible school, it was truly a blessing. I mean, we had kids running around throwing water balloons at each other. There was a you know water slide out there. We did games and races and. Uh, it's just a true blessing to be able to use that facility and for all of you guys that have put the work in and had the plans there and donated money and uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, we had a, a, a wonderful time this past week uh, with our kids out there. So thank you very much. And as Matt said, there's another opportunity for that, an organized event. I think up until now it's just been 
you know, Pastor Randy picking up the phone and trying to get three or four po folks and grabbing uh, some of Matt's football players and just kind of putting it together. But I think an organized event, we can really make a difference out there. So if you can, that's a great opportunity to serve. So thank you for those that have already served and thank you for giving an opportunity for more to serve. Uh, any more announcements? Well, if you would, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 19, verse 1 through 4. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make Him known. They speak without a sound or a word, and their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And our Apostles' Creed is on the screen. If you would, please read or recite that with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As you can see, uh, our drummer Chris is under the weather a little bit this morning, so we've got a couple songs, including this one, um, that need just a little bit of life that typically a drummer can do, but since he's not here, we're going to need you guys to participate a little bit more, stamp your feet, clap your hands, <laughs> just have a good time this morning in celebration and worship to God. We're going to start this morning with the welcome table. Sit at the welcome table. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. Sit at the welcome table one of these days, one of these days. I'm gonna feast on milk and honey. together one of these days all God's children gonna sit together all God's children gonna sit together one of these days one of these days I'm gonna sit at the welcome table I'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days I could tell, I could tell that there were several out there that wanted to clap. And I know there's a certain pressure there and then there's some anxiety and also we're gonna sing that last verse one more time and your leader's gonna try to be a little bit more proactive and say we're going to clap together here to the beat and we're gonna enjoy ourselves and let's just see what kind of difference that makes there. I'm gonna sit at the welcome day. The 
Bible quiz. Bible quiz. Does anyone know, other than Andy and the praise team, which book of the Bible that verse comes from? Get a free cup of coffee. That's right. And, and a sweet roll if you want one. It comes from the book of Nehemiah. Uh, this is uh, something that Nehemiah said as, as they were rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. So as we're doing all this work and we're working over at the Napa building or we're working at VBS like we did last week or, or maybe you're going to come not this Wednesday but the following Wednesday for the blessing of the backpacks as we bless the children and the adults that go off to school. Uh, we can claim this verse. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength when we're in school and we're dealing with uh, craziness and chaos and the joy of the Lord is our strength when we're uh, sweating and getting attacked by bugs out at the Napa building which uh, uh, it, it, it probably will happen and uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength when we start this new thing and we go into day one after Pentecost because every day is day one after Pentecost so we're excited that the joy of the Lord is a promise we can claim. We did this song last week, and uh, I know a lot of you, we did this song as a special, so a lot of you were sitting down, but you really wanted to sing on the chorus of this song, because this is one of those choruses that, uh, that you can sing. So let's play through the chorus one time. Oh, my fears like Jericho walls gotta come down, come down. All of my fears like Jericho walls gotta come down, come down. Oh Lord, my prison turns to ruin when your love losing. All of my fears like Jericho walls gotta come down, come down, come down. Now, uh, just remember that when this was done scripturally, the people who were doing it shouted. So I want y'all to sing loud, okay? So. Ooh, I've been stacking up the years I spent trading punches with the enemy. Myself a double thick stone tower of lies higher than the eye can see. Trapped in this flesh and bone, I'm crying out to you, Lord, I'm desperate. Love, come rattle this cage and set me free. All of my fears, like Jericho walls, gotta come down, come down. All of my fears, like Jericho walls, gotta come down, come down. Pride and 
the blame cutting straight to the heart of me Ooh, long before I ever called your name You were fighting for my victory Carved in your flesh and bone The wounds that have said my soul's forgiven Oh, now I can feel the darkness trembling All of my fears like Jericho walls Gotta come down, come down All of my fears like Jericho walls Gotta come down, come down Oh, Lord, my prison turns to ruin When your love moves in All of my fears like Jericho walls Gotta come down, come down, come down Build me from the ground up All I want to see is you Terrify the lies with truth All of my fears like Jericho walls Gotta come down, come down All of my fears like Jericho walls Gotta come down, come down Oh Lord, my prison turns to ruin When your love moves in All of my fears like Jericho walls gotta come down, come down, come down. Jericho walls gotta come down, come down, come down. You can be seated. God you are 
when words are not enough to tell you of our love. So listen to our hearts. Good morning. There, there we go, there we go. Um, if you'll take out your bulletin, it has our prayer requests on it on the back. If you have any updates, we'd like invite you to share those with us. And if you have any new requests, um, we want to keep Hunter Herring in our prayers. Hunter, um, is it is he UAB? Is that correct? He had a, a um, aneurysm. He was had to play on our softball team, so just keep him in your prayers, please, um, Jackie. Did you have? Jackie's asked us to continue to be in prayer for Faith Ann. We're waiting on, um, should have all of the results from tests that they've been running. Faith Ann was in the hospital for several days, so um, just please keep her in your prayers and as they get the results. Rhonda? Ron has asked us to, be, to please be in prayer for Amanda Duchesne, who's at Mayo Kin Clinic. She has three major surgeries and, a, and procedures, and right now she's not doing very well. So please keep her in your prayers. Stacy. Stacy's asked us to be in prayer for David Davis's family and her cousin Pam, their family. They, um, David and Pam passed away. So Stacy's dealing with a lot too. So as you think and pray for her, just dealing with those, the grief there. Rebel. Rebels ask us to pray for Natalie Smith. Is that correct, Natalie? Um, Natalie has had an ultrasound, and they're waiting to f get more results. They thought it was one thing, but now they're discovering it. Um, there's, there's more going on. Coach. All right. Thank you for that update. We, we're praying for um, Coach Pear and his wife, Heather, who's at um, UAB. But that's good news. Her eyes have opened. She's been responsive. So please continue to pray for them. When Ashley was coming off the stage and I got in here a little bit late, um, I asked her her cousin's name, and it's Joy, and she wrote the book. It's very inspiring. I just encourage you to go hear her speak. And I'm going to step over there and get a letter that Jane handed me um, that we got from one of our folks in CR who's incarcerated. Thank you, Ashley. Um, this week at SALA, uh, we, part of our, our lesson was on integrity, and part of the lesson at the very end, we listened to the song by Michael W. Smith, and then the lyrics of the song, if he focuses on the word un, the prefix un means not. So these are things that he says he's been. I have been unfaithful, unworthy, unrighteous, unmerciful, unreachable, unteachable, unwilling, undesirable, unwise, 
undone and unsure. But because of you and all that you went through, I know that I have never been unloved. And as we share those prayer requests and pray for people, we reaffirm the truth that because of God and his sacrifice of his son, we have never been unloved. And Joy's book, one of the things that she mentioned, she serves as a missionary, so she goes through these things that she would say to herself, somebody's holding the rope. So they're holding the rope. And that means praying. And so after I read the book, each week we send a letter to the folks from our Celebrate Recovery family who are incarcerated. So right now we have four. We have them from in Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. And one of the young men who has been a part of CR, he's incarcerated, and um, got out, made some bad decisions, and he's back. And so we set out cards every week and ask those who come, write a note. Just write a note to them. And we get, we're getting so many notes, this is very exciting, that we now have to pay more postage to send the letters, okay? <laughs> so this is Brandon's response because in the letter I wrote him, and I write a letter, I always send Randy's blog, and then I'll write a letter because I like to write letters. Um, but this is his response. Dear Nicey and Jane, I really enjoyed the message about holding the rope. I can't wait to see you all and join the team in helping others get to Christ. I hope you'll have a lot of things to keep me busy. We can sign him up for all this work that needs to be done. Thank you so much for the support. I'll do my best not to let y'all down this time. Please continue to send me encouraging words. I'm looking forward to getting back to your neck of the woods. The Lord loves y'all, and thank you for holding the rope. And when you pray for the ministries of this church, whether it's Bible school or CR or whatever goes on, and I can't even name the people who are a part of our Bible school because the list is so extensive, and that's incredible. It was amazing. The work that's been out done, done out there is beautiful, but you're holding the rope. And the people on our, on our list and the people that we mentioned were holding the rope. And that's a truth that the Holy Spirit allows us to pray in his spirit. And the truth is that we can share. If you can't think of anything else to say to people when you want to share Jesus with them, you ask them this question. Do you know that you've never been unloved? And see how that makes them think. But that's the truth, the truth that the Lord has promised to us. And in that scene in A Few Good Men, you remember where Kathy, Tom Cruise, and, and Jack Nicholson's on the stand? And Nicholson says, you want answers? And Kathy says, I want the truth. And he responds, he says, you can't handle the truth. The original script was not you can't handle the truth. It was you already have the truth. And he ad-libbed with that. We have the truth. And this power of the Spirit will make us able to handle that truth and to share it. So thank you for praying for holding the rope for everybody for this morning and the people represented here and all of the things that are going to be taking place in the future as we go out to say, do you know you've never been unloved? Let us pray. Father, we thank you so very, very much for that truth, for the spirit of truth that you promised, the spirit of truth that dwells in us as your people. And we come before you now, Lord, humbly asking you to just hear our prayers and to give grace and mercy, Lord, to give answers where they're needed, to give comfort as it's needed, Father, to just keep us faithful to hold the rope. We thank you so much, Lord, for the ability and the time and the presence here in your, with your people to pray on behalf of those on our prayer list. And Lord, we do lift up Faith Ann and her family, Max and Jackie and the doctors. We ask you to be with them as they find answers, that you will give the answers and healing. Lord, we pray for Amanda at Mayo waiting those surgeries. We ask you, Lord, just to give her peace and continue, Father, I pray that we will be faithful to pray for her. We ask you, Lord, to continue to touch Hunter's body and Heather's, bring healing and complete peace to them, Lord, and confidence in who you are. God, we ask you to give Stacy peace and be with David's family and Pam's in this time of grief. Lord, we thank you for Rebel's prayers for Natalie, her assurance that we would be praying. And Lord, we thank you that we can come before you now on her behalf. We thank you, God, for your servants, Randy and Lee. And Lord, we thank you for all the times they hold the rope for us. 
And we pray, God, that we will be faithful to pray for them and give you thanks for their leadership. We ask you to keep them safe, to give them wisdom, to be with them in all aspects of leadership. I thank you, God, for the things that you're going to do on our work day, the opportunities that we have to serve you in so many ways, Lord. And you will allow us to do that when we turn to you and say, show me truth. We ask you now to be with the rest of this morning, each service that we're going to have, our Sunday school classes. And we ask you just to put your hand on Randy and that our hearts would seek you, Lord, that we would plead before you for truth and that we would be confident in you because you are in us, you are a promise to us, and you are faithful. And Lord, though our lives may not be perfect, you are. And you lead us and you guide us and you have made us known that we have never been unloved. Thank you, God, for your goodness, for your grace, and we thank you, Lord, for teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we come this morning, I want to remind you of, uh, of a couple of things. One is that uh, when we did our music this morning and we were, uh, uh, we were talking about it and thinking about it and preparing it, uh, one of the things I was reminded of not only by what I, uh, I saw last week as we had uh, all of the kids and the adults working over here and uh, as I encountered situations and people during the week is that uh, there, there are these two opposing things happening in life and the world. Uh, there are uh, the things that Satan doesn't want us to know and he doesn't want us to see and he doesn't want us to hear and, and, and that he wants to deceive and, and, and misdirect us into all sorts of ways. And, and usually those misdirections are disguised. They're, uh, they're, they're, they, they, they are not obvious. They are things that uh, we're not aware of. Uh, Lee and I saw the movie Sound of Freedom yesterday and for those of you who don't know anything about the movie, I'm not going to reveal anything because it's worth seeing. But what I want to remind you is that this is a movie about human trafficking and about what happens when, uh, when those children and sometimes young adults are taken and, and uh, uh, just really placed into slavery and, and how uh, there are so many people that don't want us to think about this to the point this movie was made five years ago. It took them five years to get from the movie being made and produced to actually making it to the theaters because there was so much opposition. I say that reminding you that in Acts chapter 1, there's this uh, beautiful situation where the disciples go out and uh, they're hanging out with Jesus and it's been 40 days since the resurrection. And so uh, they've been in that, uh, that state with Jesus where they've been able to talk with him and walk with him and they're kind of thinking things are going to continue and, and they're beginning to think about, well, uh, what can this mean to me? And so... Uh, as they're having these conversations, they have this conversation with Jesus. And it is a reminder to us that even after the resurrection, fairly immediately after that, we have this situation where everybody's kind of feeling good about what's going on. And what happens? Satan begins to try to misdirect the disciples. And, and this is a story in chapter 1 of misdirection. 
But then we're going to not leave it there. We're going to go on to chapter 2 and find out what God did about it. But here's what happens in chapter 1. Uh, so when, when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? I want you to break that down a little bit. Jesus has been with them talking with them about the kingdom of God is like, and you can fill in that blank with a, with a lot of things. Uh, the kingdom of God is what Jesus talked about. And he expressed that kingdom, and he kept telling them uh, that the kingdom of God is actually here. Uh, John the Baptist, when he baptized Jesus, says the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here now. And yet they didn't figure it out. And they didn't get it. And in Acts chapter 1, 40 days after the resurrection, they still, don't, they still don't get it. And so what they're doing is they're asking him to free Israel and restore their kingdom. Do you think that they've kind of missed the point? Now, if I were Jesus at this point in time, I would just put my hands... I, I, I would just do this and go, okay, I went through all of this and you still don't understand at all. But just remember, we have this enemy going about like a roaring lion seeking who will, he will devour. And, and Satan immediately begins misdirecting them into something that they're not supposed to be doing that, that is not healthy. Uh, so many of us are getting caught up right now, and I, and I, I run into teens and adults and, and just many people that are caught up in this, this end time stuff and this prophecy stuff. And, and knowing about prophecy is a great thing. Just remember that Jesus is all about what is going on in the here and now, and he wants you to live your uh, faith out today and he doesn't want you to live it out as if uh, you're expecting some reward in the future and he doesn't want you to live it out uh, like we sing in many gospel songs about the land over yonder he wants you to live it out right now here today and so here's how Jesus responds to that question he says the father alone has authority to set those dates and times and they are not for you to know. That's first response. That's not for us. That's not even for us to focus on and think about and wonder about. You know, don't spend your energy and your time dealing with that. Because this next statement comes about. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. First thing that's going to happen is God's going to give you power. He's going to give you power over the things in the world, the things that you're worried about, the things that you're concerned about. And then he says this. He says, And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. You want a mission? You want to know what you're supposed to be doing? Uh, Matt, you want to know what you're supposed to be doing with those kids next week? Uh, Sally and Dale, as they're out there at your place, uh, you know what you're supposed to be talking about? Uh, here at VBS last week, as Bill's sitting over there and talking to the kids, and Patty is help, helping them with crafts and doing all these things, and Christina and Jess are working hard. You know what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be telling them about Jesus. We're supposed to be witnesses to what God has done in our life. So be wary because the enemy is disguised and is going to be trying to direct you to different things. Not things that are healthy, not things that are good, not things that are part of the gospel message. But be encouraged because Jesus has given you a mission. He has said, you're going to be my witnesses out there in the world everywhere. So uh, we heard about that missionary uh, that, that has, has been down in South and Central America. Uh, they're being witnesses. 
We hear about the things that are happening in our community through Celebrate Recovery about uh, people that are in jail that are hearing these messages and, and getting these witnesses from us. This is what God's doing here. This is what God's doing in your midst, in my midst, in our midst. This is what God wants to do in our community. This is what God wants us children. We hear their voices back there, don't we? You know what? I rue the day when that doesn't happen. I'm excited that that is happening here. And I'm excited that through the chaos of Vacation Bible School and all the little things that happened that none of you ever saw, uh, that God was with us. I got to tell you one little quick story about God being with us. Uh, you know, uh, every year at Vacation Bible School, things happen. They, they just do. Uh, and those of you who come and you think everything's seamless and everything's perfect uh, have never been around a bunch of children. <coughs> everything is not seamless and everything is not perfect. And uh, to tell you little things that Satan throws in our way and little obstacles, uh, I walk in the second night of vacation Bible school and Jackie comes running over and Jackie said, we had water in the youth room yesterday and we don't have it today. Well, this is where I just totally believe that God gives us experiences so we will learn from those experiences and be able to deal with them when we can do something for his kingdom and for his church. And I remembered a time when I had that happen in my house. And so I took the little nozzle where the water comes out and I unscrewed it and I cleaned it out and I put it back on. Water was perfect. And I don't want to say that to, to, to make me feel like I know anything about plumbing or know anything about any of this stuff. It's just an experience I had. Do you think that God used that experience I had way back there at the Freeport house where, where, where uh, Lee spends, you know, four days every week? Do you think he used that experience to do something bigger and better than what I did in that house? I think he did. Because those kids are doing crafts and they need water because they, they got to be washed off and cleaned off. And, and they can get messy. And in life, we can have all these messes happen, but God gives us something much better than the water that comes out of that faucet. He gives us living water that will give us the kind of water where we will never thirst again. And that's what we tell these kids. And that's what we told them when we said, ready, set, move. I'm, I was kind of hoping the little uh, directional sign was still in here this morning. I have to bring it in next week maybe. I know it still exists somewhere, but I'm excited about that. So the first part of this message is Satan is going to be disguised. He's going to be coming toward us and trying to deal with uh, the, the good experiences we're having by throwing things in our way. That's why Jim Caviezel said, we've been trying to get this movie out for five years, and you cannot imagine the obstacles we had in our way. He said, but God removed them. God took those obstacles out of the way. It took time, it took patience, it took energy, it took perseverance. But now, they're being witnesses that are telling people about what God is doing everywhere. That's the first side of that. But don't think that God doesn't have a solution that is much more lasting and better. And I want you to just play back in your mind what happened in this worship service this morning. Uh, if you were here about quarter till uh, nine, you got to hear laughter and you got to see people over here eating snacks and uh, drinking coffee and enjoying their time together. And, and then we kind of... Uh, we kind of got serious and we didn't realize that Angel and Jason had been up there getting the uh, streaming ready so that Miss Etoll and other people can hear what is going on at this service during the morning. And so there's all sorts of things happening. We had a mic go out this morning. We can't figure out what's wrong, but we fixed it because uh, we went to Plan B and it worked. 
So we're excited that God gives us the ability to get through the obstacles and the, and the curveballs and the obstacles that Satan throws in the way because you know what? We're going to tell people about what God is doing. We'll have the words to say what an awesome God you are, but words cannot express the love we have for you. So listen to our hearts. We sang those words. So there's a solution to all of this, and God gives it to us. And uh, Nicy is, uh, was talking about this book during her Bible study during VBS. It's called Still Day One. It's by J.D. Watt. <clears throat> and if you go back through your emails from the church and you want to get a copy of this book, I highly recommend it. Uh, the book basically reminds us that we, uh, we get all caught up in the things going on in our world and we're worried about this and we're worried about that and, and, and we're worried about, you know, the, the, you know, what we're going to be doing this week and how we're going to get through things. And, and we don't realize we should be living as day one people, the day after Pentecost. Every day that we wake up, we should be thinking about the day after Pentecost. And, and what happened the day after Pentecost was something really exciting. Because we know that on Pentecost, tongues of fire settled on the people. And they went out into the street and they started witnessing about God. And, and they started talking to people in their own languages. And then Peter preached this great sermon and thousands come to the Lord. So we know that part of the story, and that's the theophanic part of the story where God in his power and his presence expresses himself. But then, how does God sustain us every single day? And the guy who wrote this book makes a statement, and I, and I love the statement. It says, the Holy Spirit has a favorite word. Y'all want to know what the Holy Spirit's favorite word is? Now, I'm not professing to know for sure what that is. I'm just suggesting with this author that that is. He said, there's a common little word tucked away in today's text that is anything but common. I think it must be the Holy Spirit's favorite word. And it reads in English text as fellowship. The Greek term is koinonia. Let's play back through our songs this morning. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. All God's children are going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. And if you were here having dinner with all of these kids, you're in VBS. I hope you got that point. I hope you got it loud and clear. God's children were sitting at the welcome table. We welcomed them into that church. So we don't have to wait for one of these days to happen because it happened. And it can continue to happen. And it happened before the service this morning and during the service as we drink our coffee and as we enjoy our snacks. Koinonia, fellowship, is something that is happening. So this morning, as we celebrate what God is doing, let's realize what is happening there. Uh, the author of this book basically makes the point that... Uh, you know, about 1% of the time, we have something happen that we know it's from God and we are amazed that it happened. We don't know how it happened, but it's just that power of God that comes upon a situation. Anybody ever have anything happen like that in your life or, or in a place that you've been? That, that ever happened in Belize, Sally? You've been there. I've been there in Belize when it happened, but I've been there here when it happened. I was here when it happened when we baptized a young woman out in the, the prayer garden. And when we did that, it was pouring rain. I was afraid I was going to get struck by lightning, but we, but we did it anyway because God was there. And that's an exciting thing. But you know when koinonia happens? It doesn't just happen in the exciting times, but it happens in the mundane. Because most of our life 
is lived in the mundaneness of the valley, not in the, the hype and the, and the beauty and the power of the mountaintop. But we sometimes, I think, look at that and say, that's not powerful. I want to tell you folks, in Acts, and please go back. It's not going to take you that long. Please go read that book. Just read the whole book of Acts. See the things that happened. See the times that Satan, disguised as different things, came against the people. He was disguised as the religious authorities. He was disguised as the, the gods that people worshipped in that part of the world in that time. He was disguised as the disciples are trying to think about how God's going to come and restore their kingdom. As if God doesn't have a kingdom he's thinking about. You see, we have this disguised Satan trying to wreak havoc and bring chaos and be obstructional to everything that is going on in the church. And what does God give us? Koinonia. Here's what God says that koinonia kind of looks like. First looks like people who stop being excited about the things of the world and start getting excited about the things of God. It says this, A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the disciples performed many miraculous signs and wonders. That's the theophany. That's the mountaintop. And then it says, in the everyday mundaneness of the valley, in every day when we think that something wonderfully exciting ought to be happening, God says we do this. It says, and all the believers met together in one place, and they shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day. Yeah, we're worried about getting here once a week, aren't we? Said they did it every single day. And then they said they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Then he says, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship, their koinonia, those who were being saved. Pentecost happened. Pentecost happened about 40 days after the resurrection. And, and I know that all of the disciples were wanting to live on that mountaintop every single day, but they ran into struggles and they ran into the things they had to, to organize and they had to get people together. And they had problems and struggles, just like we do. But we have a, a secret weapon. And that is when we get together on Sunday morning or Wednesday night, or we get together for Sunday school, and we share fellowship with each other. I think that's one of the most powerful times we can ever have. So, you know, as the Bible says, don't neglect the meeting together. Don't neglect these times. They are special and they are precious. These people did it every single day, folks. So let's do it at least once a week. Let's do it more if we can. And let's come together in the house of the Lord, sit at the welcome table, and realize that that's going to bring a unity that, that the world isn't going to understand or know. And that's going to bring those times when we share our prayer requests together and we bear each other's burdens. And that's going to bring us to a place where God will be revealed in that midst of those people who call themselves Christians. I hope you got that in that story of Acts about what happened 
when they were obedient and they met together and they worshiped together and they prayed together and they shared meals together. So, as people of God, I'm just going to pray for us to not leave this message behind, but to learn from this and to do it. I think Jesus said it a lot. I think this is one of the ways we, we do this is we follow him. And this is how we follow him. It's we, it's we do what he has ordained and we do what he has planned and we, and we allow ourselves to become part of this movement that is first called being a Christian, being a follower of Christ. And second, part of this body of believers that, that we are together in one place. And God has come on us with power at times, and he still will do that. And it was interesting yesterday as we processed through this prayer request for this young man who's in Birmingham, and I'm getting these messages back and forth about how they feel those prayers and about how it turned out not to be what they thought it was, but something much less. I know how those things can happen. And that's a mountaintop. But you know what? Youth week this week is going to be part mountaintop and part mundaneness. And y'all go sit at the welcome table over at Sally's house on Wednesday, and I hope to be there with you. And as you have an opportunity to serve and to work and to, and to grow in what God is doing in your heart and your life, so I hope you will do it. I hope you will do it by, by being part of something bigger than you are and by realizing that it's not about building our kingdom or restoring even our nation, which we love, but it's about God restoring each and every one of us in his church because when he does that, all the other things will be added to us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we're going to seek you first, and we're going to seek the kingdom of God and, and your righteousness. We're expecting all the things to be added to us and given to us without that. That's what the disciples expected in Acts chapter 1. is They expected to know everything. But you don't want to give us all of that knowledge because we just mess it up. And we just misuse it. What you want to give us is what we need for our daily bread and what we need for our, our, our coin and knee and our body of believers that are meeting together. <clears throat> if anyone wants to share that coin and knee at that altar this morning, I'll be down here to pray with you. If anyone wants to be part of a church and part of a, a movement of Jesus Christ where... Uh, we are going into the world to tell the people of the world what God is doing in our lives and share the gospel message with children that we've told all week to get ready and get set, but to move with God, to follow Jesus, to go where he's called us to go, to be what he wants us to be, to believe in him as he's called us to believe because he is our Lord and Savior. And he is the way and the truth, and he is life. So, Lord, someone has lost their way or needs the truth or needs their life restored. You're in that business. You're not in the business of telling us about our kingdom being restored or our nation being restored. You're in the business of restoring each one of us and, and our body of believers together in koinonia, together in fellowship, together in love, together in Jesus. The altar is open because you are the holy God who comes to us and leads us forward in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would please stand, our closing song is the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Worship a holy God. Come together in his holiness and his grace and his fellowship in Koinonia. And realize that he will be with you as he promised the disciples, even unto the ends of the earth. So go, serve, love, give, be his. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.